ever wonder what animals do when they don't think any humans are watching? <sighs> Me too, all the time. What? I just invested a lot of time and a lot of money building a massive PVC jungle gym-like structure, affectionately called the Fear Frame. Using video cameras attached to the top of the frame and looking down on the reef, this beast will allow me to remotely observe fish behavior, specifically feeding behavior, and how feeding behavior can be affected by the social environment that the fish find themselves in. This is something we know almost nothing about in reef systems. Feeding behavior of reef fish is super important to the reef because many of these fish consume harmful algae. Thus, doing this study could shed some light on how we can better protect coral reef ecosystems. Super exciting stuff. Problem is, is that we miserably failed to deploy this frame. Weather got the best of us, mother nature, not always rooting for the scientists. And now we're left with a disassembled frame that we really need to get out in the field ASAP. The clock is actually really ticking because if there's one thing I've learned over the years of doing field work in coral reefs, it's that fish aren't as dumb as they look. They are actually quite wary of new objects in their environment, especially if they're big. Imagine, for example, you come home from work and there's a new big object in your living room. Let's say a statue of a baby on a tank. And no one has any explanation for you as to how it got there or why it's there. You might just might act a little differently around it and be pretty uncomfortable. Fish certainly treat cinder blocks and other large objects similarly and it takes them time to acclimate to a new object in their environment. We're about to put out a frame uh, two frames, actually, each of which cover an area of 18 square meters, a lot of space, in the fish environment, it's likely it's going to take some time for them to get used to this. Of course, we want these fish to be acting naturally for our experimental trials, which also are going to take a lot of time. And let me tell you, time is money, especially when you're doing research in French Polynesia. So the clock is ticking, people. We've got to get this frame out. We learned last time that... Two bros is just too few to get this baby out when nature is not cooperating. So we put two and two together and we figured out that we might be missing a couple pieces of the puzzle in the form of women. That's right, women. Super hardcore field biologists Julie and Corinne. These gals pretty much breathe underwater. They have agreed to help Andrew and I get this frame out into the field. This consists of getting all this PVC and all the connectors partially disassembled putting them on a small boat where it almost falls off, barely fits, driving it out to the reef, and then setting it up underwater with waves. Let's not forget using flesh-devouring cinder blocks to anchor down the corners of the frame. It's a tedious operation, but it's go time. say it's a little emotional watching that that was one of the most magnificent underwater ballets that i've ever had the privilege of observing not only did the four of us get these frames out all in one shot in one day but we did it with style and grace and in under half the time that it took andrew and i to fail at putting them out the day before this is very exciting the frames are out they're looking magnificent my heart is swelling with pride as I swim away, temporarily saying goodbye to the frames, and hoping very much that they're gonna last. That is the big question on everyone's mind. Will these frames hold up to the vicious and often cruel mother that is nature?